So according to the Chachamim, when HaKadosh Baruch addresses Moshe of the Aaron for Kiddush HaKodesh, he's telling them that they can oversee as the Bezd and the Kabbalah say this. They cannot be the Edom themselves because they are Krovim. And Krovim Apostle Yedus. And therefore, to be Kovel Chodesh, we need Anoshim Chashuvim Chebidor, Kemosan. We need experts. We need Mumchit. Amr Abiyosi, Maisa Betovia Harofe. We learned in our mission this whole story about Tovia Harofe. And the final conclusion is that Bezdin came along, they accepted the Evid that had originally been excluded, and they excluded Av Ubino, the Krovim that had originally been accepted. And as we said earlier, it would seem to be indicative of the mission that the final Sakalocha is against Rabbi Shem. Well, like the Tanakhama, we do not accept Krovim to testify on Kiddush HaChodesh. However, an Eved would be accepted. Om Rav Hanan Barovo, Hilchesok Rabbi Shimon. Now, this is very surprising. The testimony here of Rav Hanan is that we accepted the Allah like Rav Shimon, and we can rely on two Krovim, and they qualify for Edus. So the Gemara asks, Om Alei Rav Huna, the Rav Hanan Barovo, Rav Yossi Umaisa, Va'at Amr Hilchesok Rabbi Shimon. We have a rule that whenever the Mishnah finishes by telling us a story and testifying exactly how the Bezid Paskin and the final conclusion of this whole story of Rabbi Yossi with Tovia is that they ex- accepted the, uh, the Eved, but they disqualified the Krovim. So how can you say Ahilchus of Rabbi Shimon and, qual- and you can qualify Krovim? On the low, Rav Hanan responds, Many times I was standing in front of Rav and I said to him, that we pass on Rabbi Shimon in our mission of Allah Omar Lee, he should have objected to me and now you're, you're, you're attacking me. Rav let it go by. Apparently he accepted that we can, we can qualify uh, relatives, Krovim as Aiden. Amalei, Sir Huna. He now interrogates Rava, I'm sorry, Rav Hanan by Rava, and he says to him, Hechi Tenes, what exactly did you learn or teach? How did you formulate our Mishnah when you stood in front of Rav? Which was the Shita when, when Rav said, you're okay to pass him like Rav Shimon, which was the Shita who actually said that Krova Maksherin, and which was the Shita that said they were apostle. Apparently, they were different your souls in our mission as far as the names and who said who. Omalesa of Hanan, Barava, Barava, the sponsor of Huna, Ibcha. I had a different Nusuch than the Nusuch that we have in our mission. And according to my Nusuch, Rabbi Yossi said that Avubno, Vechalat Krovim, Sherem, Lietus Achodesh. And it was Rabbi Shimon who told the Maisa and Tuvia that. When they actually came to the Bezdin, the final Bezdin, they refused to accept the, the uh, Ben, meaning the Karov. They only accepted the Evan. Lama <laughs> Lay says, Rafuna says, now I understand what happened. Now I understand why Rav accepted Rav Shimon. Because in the girsa that you had presented to him, it was Rav Shimon who said that Krovim Apsulim, not like the girsa in our Mishnah, which has Rabbi Shimon saying that Adim Krovim Aksherim Lehoi. Amar Avtavi Bere Demari, Demari Tavi Amar Mar Ukva Mashmuel Hilchas Haki Rabbi Shimon. And most of you learned that Hilchas Haki Rabbi Shimon means that Hilchas Haki Rabbi Shimon the way it was said to Rav in the second Girsa of Rav Hanan, namely that we passel Krovim Liedus. Others have a different Girsa here in Al Gemara, and their Girsa is Ein Halacha Kerev Shim, meaning based on the Girsa that we have in Al Mishnah, Rav Shim was Machshir to, 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 to Krovim. The final Halacha was accepted that we don't accept Rav Shim, we reject Rav Shim because of the Edus of Tovia 
in which case the final conclusion was that Bezdin disqualified two relatives. So in fact, the Rambam Lahalacha in Hilchus Kiddush HaChodesh seems to have the gears of aim Halacha Kirabi Shimon. It means Halacha is like Rabbi Yossi, and we passel Krovin, we disqualify Krovin for Edis HaChodesh. However, I just want to mention there is another sheet in the post game that we actually do pass it like Rab Shimon. We'll take the gears as we have at Hilkes Rab Shimon. And this is the Rab Shimon in our Mishnah who says that Adim Krovim Aksherim Likil Shafodish. The Mishnah says, Elu Hainap Sulu. Who do we have to exclude for Adis Hachodish? Now Rashi interprets this mission of Elu Hainap Sulim in the light of what's called Psulim Dirabanan. There are two categories of disqualifications for Adams. One is Doraisa. For example, if someone steals something, he puts his hand into your pocket he's, and he's caught stealing, he's possibly Adams, and that's Doraisa. The Torah says, Altatius Yotva, Leo said Chamas. He's uh, an Eid Chamas. We can't trust him. The Torah excludes him. Our mission here is interested, says Rashi over and over again, in a different category of psulim, and these are psulim dirabana, which means he didn't actually steal something from you, but he ended up illegally taking your money. For example, mesache bekovia. So this is gambling, and we're going to go into the Shita Rashi says that asmachtalo kanyu, which means that when two people sit down at a gambling match, each one thinks he's convinced that he's going to win, he's a good pro, you know, he, an expert, and it doesn't really dawn upon him that he'll lose his money. So he never really had what's called Gemir Estas to give over his money. But this is not Gzela Doraisa because at the end of the day, the loser gave over his money or the chips to the winner. So that's not Vayikach Es Hachanis Biyad HaMitzri Vayikzol means you steal something from someone's hand, physically absconding it. So this is not a Gazan Doraisa, but this is a Gazan Drabonon and because he's so interested in making money and he violated this Zayla de Rabbanon, the Rabbanon established that he's postulated. Umalve Beribis, once again, this is not a Psulta Raisa, because the Malva lent some money to the Lova. The Lova agreed to pay interest, and he paid the interest. No one stole anything in the, in the sense of Ayingzal Sachanis Miyadam Mitzri. And therefore, says Rashi, this Psul is only Mirabbanon. We're afraid that such a person who lends money and takes interest will purge himself, will not give an Eidus Emes, but rather an Eidus Shekin. And you may ask me, why would a person lie about the moon? I mean, what does he gain by that? So we'll see later on about the Baitusim and so forth. Um, they used to have uh, pigeon races, and we'll see which pigeon can get there faster, and I'll put down money for that. That's very similar to Misaki Bakubia. So that's Rashi's shot. He's a Gazlan or a Bonon like Misachik Bakubi. And we're afraid that he might lie in Bezdin and fabricate the truth. However, the Gemara in Sanhedrin on Daf Chafei has another opinion about what Mafricha Yonim is all about. And the Gemara says that Mafricha Yonim were experts at enticing the birds to leave one coop and go out into the into the wild blue yonder, and then they would then they would grab onto those those birds. And this is really not Gzela Doraisa, because once the birds fly out of the coop, then they become a hefker. And even though he deliberately set it up that the bird should fly out, that's not Gezel Gomor. That's not a complete Gezel. And once again, we have a Psul Durabon. Edus Psula Mirabon. So Shvius, the Torah says that. The Paris of Shvius, Vaisa Shabbos, Haaretz Lachem, Li Achla. And the Chacham say the word Li Achla means below the Schara. That's a Gemara Navodazar Sama Beis. And Rashi quotes the Gemara right here. So even though someone who does business, he makes merchandise out of a commodity out of Eros Shvius and he violates Li Achla, nevertheless, Midin Tori is not possible Yedus because, as Tosus points out here, is only So this is another case of a psul derabonan. All these cases have the following two points in common. Number one, it's not gzela gemura, and therefore it's not a psul 
the Orisa, it's only the Rabbanu because they were afraid he might lie. And point number two is that all these individuals that have described all these categories of people who, for the love of money, will violate a Rabbanu. Now the Mishnah concludes by saying, This part of the Mishnah is going off a little bit on a tangent. And the Mishnah wants to tell you that in this list of Psulim Drabbanon, we only disqualify them for an Eidu She'ein Ha'ishak Sherala. In other words, we divide up the entire map of Eidus, the whole constellation, into two categories. There's category X, which includes Dini Mominus and Dini Nefoshos and Kiddush HaChodesh. In that category X, women are excluded from Eidus. Because the Torah says, Then there's another category of Eidus where women are accepted. And their testimony is reliable. That's what we call Eidus Isha. What that means by Eidus Isha, it usually fits into one or two categories, either a woman whose husband is out there and he hasn't come back. And one woman comes and testifies that I know he died. And they're going to allow, based on that Eidus, a woman to get remarried. Another case is where a woman had Kiri and Stira and she went into a private place. And another woman testifies that she had this affair. She had this immoral escapade. And therefore, she does not drink from May salt. In any event, there is a section of Avis where women are relied upon. And Amish is telling us that this whole list of Sulim only exclude and disqualify these, cat- these categories only as far as those, what we call X, those alios that require men and exclude women. But in that category, we call it Y, where the Torah accepts the testimony of a woman, then these Individuals, these categories of individuals would be accepted for Avis. And that's what the Gemara says now. If it's an Avis where you can accept and rely on the testimony of a woman, even these, the Masach Bekubia, the Malvi Beribis, the Mafri Chiyon, and the Sokhir Shviyas, their testimony will be accepted. Om Ravashi is also Meris, Gazlan to Devram, Cherim Li Avis Isha. If you have someone who steals money from someone else, but he only violates Zela to Rabbanon, and therefore on a Torah level we can rely on his testimony, the Rabbanon didn't rely on his testimony, but in the case of Avis Isha, where a woman would be accepted, we accept their Avis as well, which probably means in Lundus that this is not Avis, this is what you call them months. It's more like circumstantial evidence. The Mishnah says, Misha Roya Sachodesh, the Eino Yochelahalech, an old, sick individual. He saw the, month, the new moon, but he doesn't have the physical ability to come to Bezdin and it's Shabbos. Even on Shabbos, we will violate what's called the Iser Mechamer. Mechamer means when you draw an animal that has a burden on its back. And that's called Mechamer. So we will drag this man and transport him to Yushalayim on the top of the donkey. People think he's Moshiach. But anyway... And we'll do so even violating the Isra Machamer for the sake of Kiddush HaChodesh. Bafil B'mito means even if he's in a bed, we'll put the bed with him in the bed on top of the back of the donkey. And the Mepharshim explained this is a big Kiddush because Machamer is what's called an Isr Shabbos. It's not a Moloch of Shabbos. Once he's in a Mita, then by carrying and transporting the Mita, for Amos and Rishus Arabim, you're violating a Malacha do Rais of Maviv, which you normally get skila, but that too is included in the Heter of Chil Shabbos for the sake of Kiddush HaChodesh. Bim Tzodolahem, 
And if somebody tzoda means like we'll have in this week's parsha that ace of his anish tzayin, you know, he tries to jump on you, ambush you from the outside. And we'll see soon who would ambush these innocent Jews who are on their way to testify in Yushalayim at the Chodesh. We're going to see about why Dusim and why they wanted to mess up the Jews with Kiddush HaChodesh. Is then the Mishnah permits you, this is like what Mary Kahana would have said if he were alive, Lokhim Viyoda Maklos. Take along with you big sticks and beat the living daylights out of these by Tusin. And if it's a long trip and they won't be able to survive without bread and water, so we're allowed to take bread and water again. We're going to be carrying it through Shusara before Ramos, violating the Shabbos with the Malacha Doraisa, but for the sake of Kiddush Kodesh, that's permissible. Shal Mahalech Laila Viyo Machalis Shabbos Viyotzen Ledes HaChodesh. If the trip can be the uh, destination can be arrived at within Shabbos, that means, let's say, they leave on Friday night to July, they'll get there before Shabbos is over, then we'll be Machal Shabbos. And the phrase Tikro Sam is a reference to Kriya Samodos, which is Kiddush HaKodesh. And the Kiddush HaKodesh HaYidei Bezdin, the Torah is selling the Mo'adam in its time. And we will not push it off, even if it means overriding the Shabbos. If, on the other hand, the witnesses or the witness will not arrive in Yerushalayim within Shabbos, then we're not going to be able to be Makadish the Chodesh on Shabbos. And we're only going to be Machal Shabbos for the sake of Kiddush HaKodesh. So let's say, for example, he saw the Levant in the middle of Shabbos. And he's very, very far from Bezdi. And it's more than a, you know, it's a trip of a Lila Viyom, of, let's say, a 24-hour journey. And in such cases, no heter to Milchal Shabbos, because they're not going to get to Bezdi on Yom Shloshim. Now, whenever Yom Shloshim passes without a Kiddush, there'll be Makadish the Chodesh on 31 as a mullet. So therefore, we're not going to, allow for Hill Shabbos if it's not going to achieve any goal. Adjana Lecha Arba Rosh Hashanah. Now we get to the second parak of Rosh Hashanah, which is called in Enam Akiri. And this Mishnah, again, is going to continue with the laws of Kiddush HaKodesh that we began in the previous parak. What do we do in Enam Akirin Osa? We have a pair of Edim. You'll see that the Gemara is going to reinterpret the word Oso in singular as referring to the Zug, to the pair of Edim. We don't recognize these Edim. We've never heard of them. They're not registered, you know, in our official registry of Edim. Who are they? Maybe they're by two. Maybe they're on the other side. They're the enemy. Is there for Meshalchid Imo Acher La Edim? We're going to need another two Edim. Again, the word Acher. Even though it's in the singular, it's going to refer to Zug Acher, another pair of Aden to testify and to be uh, expert witnesses and testify that these two Aden are reliable. We know them. They are members, long standing members of our community. And all this is going to happen on Shabbos. In other words, not only are we going to bring the Aden into Besden on Shabbos and violate the Shabbos. We're even going to bring in the Hakara, meaning those Aden that testify about these two Aden, they also are necessary because we cannot be Makadish the Chodesh without proving the reliability and the, the credibility of these two Aden. Before the Baitusa messed us up, we would rely on any Aden that came in, the Jewish, you know, they're wearing Yalmukah and Sitsis, I don't know, whatever it is. They, they, you know, they have their kosher food in the, on the naps, on the back, backpack. And every Jew has a cheskis kashus. We don't have to testify about every Jew so, so he could qualify to, to testimony, for testimony. However, Misha Kilku, I buy too soon. Eskinu chaloyu makablim elam in They made a takana that we cannot rely on any two edim. Any two edim that we don't recognize a suspect to be the by too soon. And they're coming deliberately to undermine and to mess up our moados 
to make sure that based on a rely on false testimony, they often hire Adim, you know, like the mafioso style, to perjure themselves and testify falsely that they saw the moon when the whole thing is a bluff. These were the Baitusim. The Baitusim were students of someone by the name of Baitus, and apparently they misunderstood what Baitus had in mind. And uh, Baitus uh, somehow caused them to reject traditional Masora uh, Judaism. And then the Baitusim ultimately became kind of like the enemies of the Jewish people. Let me just see. Oh, here he says, Sodoku Baitus, Talmidim Antignos Ish Soho And the Mishnah in Avos at the beginning of Pirkei Avos records that they received from Antignos, their Rebbe, the, the dictum, Al Tiyu Kavonim Amshamshis Rav Nasa Kalpras, Al Al Vikvon Mashasra Shaloma Kalpras. And they understood that what their Rebbe was saying, Chas Shalom, was that there's no reward in the next world. And don't even dream of reward. Like, that's not what Antikos had in mind. He had in mind you shouldn't be motivated by the reward of the next world. You should do it L'shem Shamayim. But in any event, as a result of this mistake in their understanding of, the Antigno, of Antignos, they moved to another place and apparently they developed a whole following of people who denied the Dibre Chacham. They, they, they were Yatsul Aminos. They became Apikarsin. And the Tzdukim were called Tzdukim because they were disciples of Sadok and the Baitusim were, were, were disciples of Baitus.